In this video, I will be attempting to recreate Kurt Cobain's tone from Nirvana's show at the Roseland Ballroom in New York on July 23rd, 1993. This Roseland Ballroom show has a legendary reputation for a few reasons. It's the only show where Kurt played his Fiesta Red Mustang in this form, which has been nicknamed by fans as the Roseland Mustang. It's one of the very few shows Nirvana played after recording in utero, but before its release. After the global phenomenon that was Nevermind, the whole world was itching to hear Nirvana's new material. There was a lot of press at this show, which resulted in a huge amount of photos. Many of them have become very iconic, the photos of Kurt playing live with his red and black sweater. It's the first show with cellist Lori Goldstein, who went on to record Unplugged with the band, and the first Nirvana show with an acoustic section in the set. It is also the first show since Jason Everman was in the band in 1989 that Nirvana had a second guitarist on stage. Kurt's guitar tech John Duncan joined them for Drain You, Tourette's, Aneurysm, and Barry Ape. Kurt wanted a second guitarist in the band, and this was seen as a test run to see how it would feel to play with another guitarist. I don't know if John was seriously being considered to be a permanent new member, but famously, Pat Smear went on to get the job a few months later. I love the small handful of mid-1993 shows that take place after Neuter was recorded but before it was released. I've seen someone describe them as having the production and set of the Neuter tour, but with the intensity of the Nevermind era, and I think that's a great way to look at them. But perhaps the biggest reason the show was so well known is because in the early morning hours of July 23rd, Kurt overdosed on heroin and is believed to have been dead before being revived by his daughter's nanny and Nirvana's UK PR agent. He was revived, and Nirvana went on to play an incredible set that night at the Roseland Ballroom. The audience and the mountain of press agents and photographers completely oblivious to the fact that this singer had died several hours prior. I've seen some people claim that Kurt died and was revived just minutes before the show, but this is false. It has been verified in a few different books and articles that this occurred in the early morning hours that day. As previously mentioned, Kurt's main guitar was his Fiesta Red Mustang. He had just received it. It was shipped a few weeks prior on June 28th, along with his Sonic Blue Mustang that would become Sky Stang 1. The only mods Kurt had done to this guitar before Roseland is switching out the bridge single coil pickup for a Seymour Duncan JB Jr. and having Schaller strap locks installed. Aside from those two mods, the Roseland Mustang is a stock MG69 Mustang. Kurt himself must have not liked the red on red look and the JB Jr., as this is the only show where we see the guitar in this form. The next time we see it is on the New Road Tour later that fall, where it's in its final arranged stank form, with a white pearl pickguard and full-size JB humbucker. For the acoustic portion of the Roseland show, he used his Epiphone Texan. From live pictures, we can also see that he played his Univox Phase 2 High Flyer. There is high quality video footage of the show, but only for a few songs, and he's playing the Mustang in all of it. So we have to rely on audience bootlegs and the tones we hear on them to guess when he switched guitars in the set. To my ears, the electric tone sounds consistent until after the acoustic set. I could be wrong, but my guess is that he used the Mustang for the bulk of the show and then used the High Flyer for the last two songs. I will be using my 1995 Jagstang that has been modded to Roseland specs. I had it in semi-arranged stang form for many years with a full-size JB, but I recently changed it up, modding it with a red tortoiseshell pickguard, Seymour Duncan JB Jr., 2021 Jagstang neck pickup, and Schaller strap locks. I've had this guitar since 2011. It was my first Fender, but after doing the Roseland makeover, it feels and sounds like I got a brand new guitar. I have affectionately named this guitar Rosie. It feels like this Jagstang has been given a second life and I seriously can't get over it. Check out my recent comparison video if you want to hear how the full-size JB and JB Jr. sound against each other in this guitar. I recently partnered with Sketchy Pedals on Instagram, a very talented graphic designer who is offering her original Nirvana prints. I just received my Roseland ballroom print and it looks amazing next to Rosie in my music room. Message her on Instagram to get your print I will be skipping the acoustic section of the show, as I do not have anything similar to Kurt's Epiphone Texan. For the last two songs, I'm using my Eastwood Phase 4 High Flyer. It's not a Phase 2 High Flyer, but it's the closest I have, and I believe it got the job done. For pedals, Kurt used the Sanzam Classic, Boss DS2, Electro Harmonix Small Clone, and Electro Harmonix Echo Flanger. There are some really good sound check pictures from the show, and some of them clearly show him adjusting his Sanzam so I thought for sure that that was his main distortion for this show. I tried to get as close to the tone as I could with my Sanzam for a long time, but I just couldn't get it. In frustration, I then tried with my DS2, 
and surprisingly got the tone pretty quick. My setup is not exactly the same, so I'm not trying to say that Kurt 100% used the DS2 for this show, but for my recreation, the DS2 completely nailed it. I'm using that pedal for every song. I did not end up using my Sanzam. It sounds like Kurt used his Echo Flanger for Scentless Apprentice, The Bridge of Drain You, and Endless Nameless. I don't have an Echo Flanger, but I do have a mid-90s polychorus. I wasn't able to 100% match the sound Kurt got out of his Echo Flanger, but I feel like I got somewhat close, especially to the clean Echo Flanger sound. Also, I gotta say quick, in re-listening and researching and analyzing this show for this video, I realized that this version of Endless Nameless might be my favorite. The echo flanger effect during it sounds really awesome. Some of the gear that Kurt used during this show, such as the JB Jr., Boss DS2, Small Clone, and Schaller Strap Locks are available in my Amazon storefront. My storefront will be linked here and in the video description. For amplification, Kurt used his Mesa Boogie Studio Pre going through a Crest 4801 power amp going to Marshall Caps. This is the part of a setup I don't have. I will be using my Fender Tone Master Twin Reverb, which I feel gets very close to his clean tone when dialed in just right. You'll now hear every riff from the show, aside from the acoustic set. I think this is a pretty cool and unique live Nirvana tone, and I had a lot of fun with this one. Let me know what you think.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other Nirvana gear videos.